Hello and welcome to Overdrive. I'm Shireen Bhan. Let's start the show with an interesting car. Well, actually, it's not quite a car. It's a van. Perhaps it's not quite a van. It's actually a compact MPV. And it's the latest offering from Maruti Suzuki. It's called the Ertiga. And it promises to give Toyota Innova its worst nightmare yet. Sirish got behind the wheels of the Ertiga in Goa to get you this first drive report. Despite 9 out of every 10 Innovas going to taxi fleets today, if you ask me for my recommendation for a spacious, comfortable 7-seater for the family, I'd still recommend the Toyota. And that's because 7 years after it was launched in India, the Innova still does not have a credible and serious rival until now. Marty Suzuki has just launched the Airtrigger two and a half years after it was shown in concert form at the Auto Expo and this poses the most serious threat to the Innova that the Indian market has ever seen. The Airtrigger was first shown as the Concept R3 at the 2010 Auto Expo and then its final production version was unveiled at the 2012 Expo to much acclaim. Maruti was clear right from the start that the Airtiga had to look more like a car and less an MPV. And true to its word, the Airtiga uses a lot of components and design elements from the Swift and the Ritz in the bonnet, the grille and the overall profile. The pronounced wheel arch up front is the only indicator of this being a big vehicle. And at the rear, its small cluster of tail lamps adds to its car-like feel. It has a clean, uncluttered look with the rear spoiler adding a bit of sportiness and of course this test car has an aftermarket body kit that adds a lot to the style and does not compromise too much on ground clearance. On the inside, there is plenty of room though the Ertiga is compact, measuring just 4.2 meters in length unlike the Innova which is 4.6 meters. The cabin looks and feels very much like the Swift and Swift Desire the only difference being the greyish brown components instead of the desired black and beige, which personally I prefer. It's got all of the Swiss components and equipment levels except for climate control. And especially noteworthy are these front seats, which are comfortable and supportive over long distances. Now, this is the second row, and this is comfortable. Now, because the seats slide on rails, you can adjust it and Maruti says that 93% of the time nobody sits in the back row. So why compromise space in the middle row? That's why they've kept the sliding seats and it gives you good enough and decent enough knee room. If somebody is sitting at the back, then obviously you'll adjust it and there. This would be okay. This would be okay for short distances. I wouldn't complain too much. Would I complain at the back? So you slide the seat down now because the floor is low you don't have to clamber in and you don't have to do gymnastics to get inside the car up here and this is not bad at all okay it's not the most comfortable place now if i put the seat up and adjust the seat back angle this is tight right i would grumble if i was put here for mumbai pune runs or mumbai goa runs but for short distances say half an hour 45 minutes i wouldn't really complain too much and that's because the ergonomics are right let me show you. They talk about chair height. Now, chair height means your knee to your hip ratio. Unlike other SUVs which have a high floor, you're sitting with your knees up, right? And that gives, that makes it uncomfortable over long distances. Here, the ergonomics are right. The seat back angle is perfect. This is a very, very well packaged and proportioned vehicle. And they've done a damn good job. To keep costs in check, the basic platform and engines are carried over. This new K14 engine, it is very closely based on the K12 engine, though it has a longer stroke and that gives it a displacement of 1.4 litres. Power goes up to 95 horsepower, but crucially, bottom end grunt has improved. And so you don't have to rev this engine to get performance out of it. It also retains the eagerness of the K-series engine and that is something that we really love. Also, the Airtiga weighs just 1.2 tons and that gives it a good power-to-weight ratio and makes for a quick MPV. 
Another important aspect that Maruti were keen to stress is that this should feel like a hatchback. Not like a commercial vehicle, not like a van, but like a hatchback. And honestly, it does. Behind the wheel, this does not feel too different from a Swift. In fact, it feels more like the Ritz because the Ritz is that tall boy hatchback. And this does feel a bit like a tall boy hatchback. And that's a perfectly good thing. It gives you slightly better visibility. If you want, on the top-end variant, you can adjust the seat height so you can sit lower. So like this, while sitting like this, put the seat a little bit in front. And I feel like I'm sitting in a Swift. I feel like I'm sitting inside the car. There is, of course, huge amount of headroom, so you might as well use that for better visibility. But otherwise, it's a great car to drive. Now, we talk of the VW Group being acknowledged masters of platform sharing. But in India, Maruti Suzuki is doing it very, very well. This platform is carried over from the Swift and obviously the Swift Desire. And that brings huge volumes. The ride quality obviously has been tuned for comfort because a car like this, you would need more comfort. But it does not come at the expense of handling. You can't chuck this around like you would a Swift. But it is comfortable and confidence inspiring. You can drive it fast and while there is a bit of body roll, it always tells you what it is up to. Nothing comes as a surprise. Planted is a word that keeps coming to my mind and that's because this is a planted MPV. Benefiting from its monocoque construction, unlike other MPVs which are built on a heavy ladder frame chassis. Now because the Etika is 4.2 meters in length, it's not under 4 meters, so it doesn't qualify for that excess duty brakes for small cars. Made no sense to put the 1.2 litre engine and then we'll all criticize it for being underpowered and really not focusing on petrol, they're focusing only on diesels. With this engine, it is well matched to the car and plus the fuel efficiency, they're talking about around 20 kmpl in under standard test conditions. It'll translate to around 14 in normal driving conditions and that's damn good for a car like this, where other MPVs, they return around 6, 7. In fact, there are no petrol MPVs that you can really talk about. Here, you have a good petrol engine in an MPV that is relaxed, that doesn't make any noise, that is refined, well specced. The other engine, obviously, is the diesel and that is going to sell much more than the petrol. It's a 1.3 litre engine that you've seen in everything. But this has got the same SX4 VGT turbo, so power goes up to 90 horsepower and that's again well suited to the performance requirements of this vehicle, especially the torque requirement. You put seven people in it and it'll still pull comfortably. So have Maruti Suzuki got it right with the Ertica? Well, there really is no point mincing words now, is there? Maruti have got it spot on. This segment didn't exist in India up until now and people were clamoring for it. Maruti is so confident about it, they're not even talking about taking sales away from the Innova. They put out a shocking statistic. 15 million cars are there on Indian roads today, out of which 10 million are Maruti Suzuki's. Most of them are small cars and all of those customers want to upgrade. Where do they go? Well, you have the SX4, you have the Swift Desire, you also have the Kizashi, but mm, well, nobody really buys the Kizashi. But customers are looking for an alternative and this is a brilliant alternative. It's got space, it's got quality, it's got great engines, it's got fuel efficiency, it's got performance. It is quite good to drive also, it rides well. Everything is packaged perfectly on this car. Now, I don't know the pricing yet, it hasn't yet been announced. But knowing Maruti Suzuki, they're not going to get that wrong now, are they? And all things put together, with the Air Digger, they have a sure shot winner on their hands.